In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Pivot to analyze and make measurements on a video that you've uploaded. First thing, you're going to start in the bottom right-hand corner and touch that full screen button. And this makes it easier to see on your iPad. Then look in the bottom left-hand corner where it says Tool Color. This is just an option that you can change depending on the video which uh, tool colors are going to show up best. You'll notice I have a meter stick in the video. We're going to use that to calibrate and uh, set a specific known distance for the video. In the top right hand corner, you'll see the tools drop down menu. And for instance, the first one is that calibration tool, so I can turn that on and off. The second one is a stopwatch. The third one is a meter stick. Fourth one is like a two dimensional meter stick, and then the last one is a protractor. You'll notice on the meter stick, which is what we're going to use, it doesn't, the measurements aren't clear, they're all fuzzy, and it says please calibrate. So before I use that, I need to tell the meter stick, tell Pivot, how long something is in the video. I decided to use an actual meter stick here. If you don't have an actual meter stick, you need to know the length of something in the video. So I'm going to take the end of this calibration tool and I'm going to put it at the ends of the meter stick. Now I could go from 0 to 50 centimeters if I want and call that half a meter, but since the ends of the meter stick are pretty clear um, where those are, I'm just going to use the ends on that. And then it's where it says distance, I'm going to tap the word distance there. I'm just going to put in one meter. I could also do centimeters. I could do 100 centimeters if I wanted, but I'm just going to do one meter. Now when I bring up the meter stick or the ruler, you can see it's very sharp and all the numbers are in there. I'm going to turn off the calibration tool because I don't need to see it anymore. So to use this meter stick, you can grab the ends just like in any uh, document editing software, and I can make it taller, I can make it skinnier, I can make it longer. You also notice that the numbers change, so you'll see if I get really big uh, it's going to add more numbers on there as I get small, they just kind of disappear, but it's all the same length. So right here, it, this is 0.5, yeah, let's do this here, um, so it's 0.5 meters, and you'll notice that the, that the 0.5 meters doesn't match up perfectly with my meter stick. My meter stick might be angled with the camera, or maybe I didn't have the calibration exact. So there, it's not a perfect system, but with any measurement, you're going to have some uncertainty. But as I change the length of my measuring tool, that 0.5 meter stays the same distance. Um, the other thing I can do is I can rotate it. Let's see, how do I do that? So I'm just taking, you can't really see my fingers, but I'm just taking two fingers, putting one in the middle, and then the other one I am moving up and down to rotate it. Um, it's pretty intuitive. If you just kind of grab the meter stick and try to turn it with your fingers, it's going to turn. And so I want to rotate it and line it up with my car. And then I'm going to decide, well, let's watch the video first. Um, one easy way to do instead of hitting play, so this is just play and everything just goes, but instead of doing that, I'm actually grabbing this bottom black bar, and I can move it back and forth and control it. Um, and I want to see how blurry does the car get. And it looks like that piece of tape gets kind of blurry, so I want to choose a consistent point. I'm going to use the front piece of that tape as my measurement point. Um, so I can just put the meter stick right on there, and we can make this a little longer if we want. And then I want to record the position of the car at a variety of times. And so I'm going to bring out my stopwatch, and you'll notice that the time is zero seconds. If my video didn't start, let's say the car didn't start moving till here, where it says 0.3667 seconds, I would just hit reset, and that's starting my, my stopwatch from... Um, wherever I want it to start it. But this video is set up so at the beginning of the video is zero time. I want to see the total time in the video. So we have, before I touch it, about 1.4 seconds. So if I measure the position every tenth of a second, that'll give me 14 data points. And if I do every 0.2 seconds, that'll give me seven data points. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do every um, 0.2 seconds just for this video. If you hit the refresh button in the bottom left-hand corner, that's what happens. It just brings everything back, um, the video back to the beginning. So I'm going to do every 0.2 seconds. So I'm going to use the controls in the bottom right-hand corner. And I may not be able to, let's see if I can get exactly 0.2 seconds here. Yes, there we go. So 0.2. So then I would look at my uh, meter stick, and now I'm not going to move the meter stick 
ever again once I have it set up where I want. And I can see the front of that car is at about 0.03 meters. So it's uh, you have to be able to use a ruler, but it's at 0.03 meters. So I would write down on my data table, position 0.03 meters, or I could put three centimeters if you want to do it in centimeters, um, and time 0.2 seconds. And then I'm going to go again a few frames forward to 0.4 seconds. And again, I'm going to look there, and it's, well, it's not quite 0.1, but 0.09 is past that. So I'm going to write that down as 0.095, and the time is 0.4 seconds. And I'm going to go to 6 seconds here. And that looks like it's about 0.19 meters for 0.6 seconds. And I would just continue that all the way along. That would give me about 7 data points. What I might choose at the end is to instead of every 0.2 seconds, do every 0.1 seconds, because it looks like it's moving a little bit faster over here, and I could get some more data points at this end here. Um, but that's up to you, and it's going to just depend on your video and the scenario. As I'm taking that data, I'm just writing that down in my packet, and then later what I'll do is I'll transfer that um, into the data table on Pivot and use Pivot to graph it. So that's how to measure, make measurements from a Pivot video that you updated.